So you've got solar panels installed and the next step is to get a battery. But how do you know what size battery is right for you? Well, keep watching this video because we're going to explain exactly how to choose what size battery storage you need. We're gonna use two real world projects that we've installed, one behind me here and one on another site where we're going to be sizing battery storage based on the data that we've got on each site. Make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. So we're here at our first site in sunny Saffron Walden and we installed 12 kilowatt peak of solar panels on the roof of this garage with an eight kilowatt inverter, which is behind me. Now the house, which is remote from here, already has a small solar array on it as well. So overall they got potential to generate 9.5 kilowatts of solar at any one time. But the question is how much battery storage would really be practical for them to use. And in order to know that, we really need to know their usage data. So with this solar edge system that we've installed, the inverter has a mod bus. The mod bus is reading several things. It's reading how much solar is being generated. It's reading how much electricity the house is using. And it's reading how much of the solar that we're generating is being exported out to the grid. So what we need to do is get various figures of data, put them together in order to piece the clues that we need to know what size battery system will be perfect for this particular client. And all of that is on my computer. Let me show you. So here in the SolarEdge monitoring dashboard, we can see some really interesting data. One of the things is the lifetime production of the system. So this system was installed in October 2022. It's now March 2023. And amazingly, we've already generated 1.3 megawatt hours of energy with this particular system, which is amazing. However, there's one problem. Half of that energy has been exported out to the grid, so the customer hasn't been able to use it themselves. We're gonna fit battery storage here to enable them to harness that energy that would normally be exported out to the grid, store it in a battery, and then use it in the house when they really need it. But how big should the battery be? Well, we need to know how much they're exporting, so how much energy is available, and then how much are they using in the house overnight when the sun is not shining? Because that's really the use case that is most suitable for battery storage is that overnight period when the sun's not shining, how much power are they using overnight from the time that the sun sets to the time that the sun rises in the morning. And thankfully, the Solar Edge portal gives us all of that information. What we can do is we can go into a daily view and we can see on a day by day basis how much power they have imported how much they've exported, how much they've generated. I'm gonna look at a particularly sunny day because bearing in mind that this is March, we're still not at the peak of summer. In summer, they're gonna be generating even more. It is cold, so they're using their heat pump to heat their house. So their overnight usage is gonna be quite high at this time of the year. So we wanna get the right balance between the two. And as I flick through the days, I can see that their import from the grid varies from like 41 kilowatt hours on a day when they've charged their electric vehicle um, down to 12 on another day where they've just got fairly standard usage so for example three days ago they generated 23 kilowatt hours of energy 69% uh, of that was exported out to the grid 16 kilowatt hours so that is their spare power that they are currently not harnessing to the full because let's face it most of us use more energy overnight when we're back home from work when we've got the heating on when we're cooking than we do during the day when we're out working and nobody's at home. What we're gonna do is look at various days and see what the import is, what the export is, and try and get an average figure between the two that will make it perfect for our battery storage. Let's take uh, seven days ago. So it was a day that was quite nice and sunny. They generated 27 kilowatt hours, but they exported 19 kilowatt hours of energy. On that same day overnight, they imported 37 kilowatt hours. They were charging the car during that time, but still overnight they imported a heck of a lot of electricity. So I'm seeing now that if we had a 10 kilowatt hour battery storage system, it might not be enough to store all of that exported energy and overnight it would quite quickly be used up. So we're looking at maybe a larger 
battery system, 15, 20 kilowatt hours, for example. If we flick through a few other days and we focus particularly on the nighttime usage, we can see that about 10 days ago, they had a nighttime usage of 21 kilowatt hours. Um, then the previous day to that, they had 14 kilowatt hours nighttime usage, 10 kilowatt hours nighttime usage. 13 kilowatt hours. So on a day when they're not charging the car, it looks like they're using between 10 and 20 kilowatt hours of energy. At the same time, on most days, they're exporting between 10 and 20, sometimes even more, out to the grid. So my thought is this, based on that data that we have now, how about we fit a 20 kilowatt hour battery storage system? So that rather than exporting that 20 kilowatt hours out to the grid, they can store it in a battery and use it overnight. And then we take their self-consumption from 50-50 up to maybe 70 or 80%. Really the only time when they won't be able to charge from the excess solar will be if they're peaking over and above the five kilowatt output the, that the battery storage system has, or when they're using more than 20 kilowatt hours of energy overnight. So I think that fitting a 20 kilowatt hour battery storage system in this particular case will work really nicely. But it just shows the importance of having the data because when I originally spec'd up this system, I spec'd it up with a 10 kilowatt hour battery system, but actually we can clearly see that there's way more room for, for growth with the battery on this particular project. Now there's another portal that we can use here because we've got a MyEnergy Zappi charging point installed. And so if I go on the MyEnergy portal, I can actually compare the data from SolarEdge with the MyEnergy data just to see if it matches up. And we will be fitting a MyEnergy Libby battery storage system here. So it's nice to make sure that all of the data in uh, the MyEnergy portal is correct too. And you can see these yellow blocks here are the export. So every day, particularly when it's sunny, they're exporting quite a lot of energy. We do have an export limit set on this site at the moment as well because uh, we were waiting for the G99 approval and commissioning to be done. So this export could potentially be even more than that when the export limit is removed and bearing in mind we're only in spring too and in summer it's going to be pumping out even more power. So this kind of matches with my expectations. Okay, so we'll look at a particular day like the 23rd. This is a fantastic example. So you can see they exported 19.3 kilowatt hours, which is all of that yellow there. They imported 37, but a lot of that, you can see that nice straight line that is charging up an electric vehicle. Um, so they were charging up the EV between sort of 7.30 and uh, midnight. So that's what that is. But if you take a, you know, an average day, they're exporting about 20 kilowatt hours and they're importing about 20 kilowatt hours. And all of this overnight usage then will be captured from the battery rather than taking it from the grid. So essentially what we can do is when we look at this curve here, that is the export, what we wanna do is reduce that and then use that to cover this red bit here and make everything green as much as possible. Uh, and the MyEnergy system is a great way to visualize that. So if you do have a MyEnergy Zappi, it's good because you're gathering data which then can be used to spec a solar and battery storage system later on because you can see your exact daily usage. So that's one particular case here on this smaller system. Now I'm gonna take you to another project where there's an even bigger system. See you over there. We're here in cloudy Cambridge where we've got a 27 kilowatt ground mount array in this beautiful farmhouse and the customer needs more battery storage so we're going to analyze the data and to do that let me take you inside and here we are in front of the first battery that we installed here about six months ago now the customer as you can see from that huge solar array is generating a ton of energy and a lot of that was being exported out to the grid but on top of that they've got a three-phase heat pump that's heating their house and that uses a lot of electricity overnight. So our challenge was to size the battery system to be able to store enough of the excess solar that they're generating during the day and help to run the house and the heat pump during the evening. 23 kilowatt hours of battery storage was installed but after analyzing the data, we've realized that we're only just scratching the surface. So we're here to size an even bigger battery. How much extra capacity do you think there'll be? Let me know in the comments below. 
let's have a look at the data. So we've installed a MyEnergy Zappi charging point here. And the great thing about the MyEnergy system is that you get an app which logs all of your energy usage. You can look at your usage day by day. You can even look at your live usage view. So up on the screen here now, you'll see the live view that's happening at this property. We're generating 1.6 kilowatts of solar at the moment. Obviously it's actually about half past six in the evening. The sun is getting down, it's raining. So it's pretty cool that we're still generating that amount. The battery's discharging at a rate of 6.4 kilowatts. I'm charging the car up at a rate of 11 kilowatts. And so we're importing 2.8 kilowatts from the grid, which is not a huge amount, let's face it. So 37% of the energy that's being used on this property right now is actually coming from renewable sources, which is really cool. But the question we need to ask is how much power is being exported here on a regular basis and how much is being imported overnight so that we can try and ramp up that level of self-consumption by installing more batteries. To do that, we tap on the leaf symbol here and then we can see the import and export figures from today. So, so far today, they've imported 32.3 kilowatt hours from the grid. They've consumed 61.7 kilowatt hours of their own energy from their solar. And they've exported to the grid 18.9 kilowatt hours. That's all factoring in that we've already got 23 kilowatt hours of storage here. There's still, just today, on a fairly cloudy day, been 18.9 kilowatts kilowatt hours of export. With 32 kilowatt hours of import too, that means that we've got at least the capacity for another 20 kilowatt hours of storage. But if we look at some of the other days, you'll see some interesting figures. So if we look at yesterday, for example, yesterday was a very sunny day. They exported 82.6 kilowatt hours of energy to the grid and they imported 50.6 kilowatt hours of energy. And if we want to look at when that import happened, if we look at the performance history graph here, you can see that the import really was happening overnight, particularly from the heat pump, when the heat pump keeps kicking in and out. But also there's quite a high base level of usage throughout the house from all the electronics that are plugged in, things that are just ticking over. That resulted in 50 kilowatt hours of import overnight. Now that's obviously just one day of usage that we were looking at. If we look at a whole month, so last month, and again, remembering last month was March, it's not the highest month of generation, they exported 636 kilowatt hours of energy and they imported 2,119 kilowatt hours. So two megawatt hours imported, 1.45 megawatt hours of self-consumption, which is great, but it's still only 41% and we wanna really get that up as much as possible. So straight away, what do I learn from this data? Well, I learned that they've got up to 80 kilowatt hours of free energy that they could store in a battery and that overnight they could really do with that extra energy because they're consuming 50 kilowatt hours overnight that isn't coming from the battery or renewable sources. And that's why on this particular property, we spec'd our biggest ever battery storage system. 60 kilowatt hour battery is going in here in the next few months. And we're going to be installing the MyEnergy Libby battery system, which partners perfectly with the MyEnergy Zappi charger that they've got and enables everything to talk to each other to make best use of the battery capacity that they've got. So we'll be installing three MyEnergy Libbies, one on each phase with 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage on each of those phases. The inverters are five kilowatt inverters, meaning they can charge and discharge at a rate of five kilowatts. And that should enable our customer to cover almost his entire usage from his solar that he's generating in his garden. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me really excited. And it just shows the power of solar and renewable energy at your home. So here is our blank canvas where we're going to be installing another 40 kilowatt hours of storage to my energy Libby systems on this wall here. And then on the other side of that wall in the plant room where the previous battery storage system was installed, another 20 kilowatt hours resulting in 60 kilowatt hour system with three five kilowatt single phase inverters that's gonna really level up the self-consumption on this property. And if you want to see the full install that's gonna be happening here very soon, make sure you like and subscribe and have notifications turned on so you don't miss out on the next video. Leave us all your comments below as well and thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.